Hey friend, Graham here from recordingrevolution.com. Today let's talk about bass guitar, specifically how do you get your bass to cut through on laptop speakers or iPhone speakers where so many people are casually listening to your music. Those speakers are awful. Uh, they have no low end presence. Um, they roll off the top end, of course, but you have a very mid-range focused um, speaker and your mix has to translate. It has to sound good there because um, that's where people like to listen to music. And as awful as those speakers are, um, a good mix should hold up there. And specifically today, let's talk about the low end. If you have a synth or a bass guitar, it really doesn't matter if it's you know fake bass or, or acoustic bass or electric bass. How do you get that crappy small speaker that's very mid-range focused to represent the bass notes, which are really, really important? And the truth is you can't. You can't really accurately represent the low end, so we have to trick those speakers to represent the low end. And you do that through distortion or saturation or harmonics. And I want to show you a simple way to do that today. So here I have a song where the, the mix is already kind of together and the bass is kind of mixed by itself. Um, then I'll show you how we can use this distortion trick. Oh, the nightmares come to my every side With open arms and open eyes Yeah, the nightmares come to me every night All right, that's the bass tone we're working with. I like it. It's full. It's gotten some EQ work on it, but let's help it stand out or cut through on smaller speakers. One way to do that is through some distortion, like I said. So if I have the bass guitar track here in green, um, what I do is after you've processed the bass to sound good on regular speakers in your studio, on your monitors, on good headphones, once you've mixed it well and you're thinking, I don't know if this will cut through and solve small speakers or you go out and test it on a laptop speaker or on your iPhone speaker and you can't really hear the bass, then it's time to implement this trick. And what you can do is grab a send. In this case, in Pro Tools, I've created a send, which simply allows you to send a copy of your track somewhere else on a bus. Just like a bus takes people to different places in the city, a bus inside of your DAW takes audio to different places in the mix. So it's just gonna take a copy of the bass guitar and hop on this bus, send it over somewhere else. I wanna send it to a blank track that I've called Bass Distortion. And it's got no audio on it, and so I wanna send it there. And I like to send it pre-fader. All that means is this copy is sent before anything happening down here on the fader. So I could mute the bass track, but still, hear the copy of the bass coming through here. Okay, so it's not gonna be determined by what happens here. It's independent. So pre-fader send, very important. All we've done though is send a copy of the bass next door to a blank track. The beauty is that now we can add some distortion to this track. In this case, I'm a big fan of Sansamp. It comes for free with Pro Tools, so I use it. And it's just like a, a distortion box. They've got weird knobs, crunch, buzz, punch, drive, preamp. They all mean different things. And then there's a two-tone EQ and then an output. Uh, I just fiddle. I just fiddle around till I get a more sizzly, mid-rangey, thin tone. Okay, so take a listen to what this is doing. Okay, we've taken out the low end, but we've added some more mid-range bite. This is helpful to blend in with the original. So again, we have the original over here. And now we can blend in this guy. So let me pull the fader down and start dialing up or blending in this distorted track alongside of it.
And if I take it away, So all we're doing is taking the full original bass and adding this mid-rangey bite with harmonics and a little bit of grit up top. That low quality mid-range focus speakers like on your laptop or your phone can produce really well. So while we won't be able to hear the low notes or those low frequencies on our crappy smartphone speakers, we will be able to hear these upper harmonics that the distortion is doing to the bass. And so we'll still perceive the bass moving and filling out the chord. Uh, and this will still sound good on big speakers because it has the fullness here. And that is the simple power of having distortion on a duplicate of your bass. The beautiful thing is you now have two faders that are independent. You can turn this on or off as an effect. You can automate it up or down for different parts of the song, or if you really need it, period, to get the bass to cut through, period, across the entire song on really crappy speakers, then you can leave it in, and that is the secret. Don't EQ the crud out of the actual bass, just add distortion or harmonics that aren't there, and it will cut through much, much better. That's the tip. Try it out on your next mix. I'm sure you'll find a way to get it to work beautifully using any kind of amp modeling or distortion box that you have available. Now, before you go, I want to give you something that might help you out. because I didn't get to touch on the EQ of the bass guitar. How do you EQ a bass in the first place? And this is a huge part of getting your tracks to sit well on any speaker or any environment is EQ. Uh, I've put together an EQ checklist that is a step-by-step -step checklist for you to go through seven steps to how to think about using EQ in your software. So when you're mixing, you can take any track, like a bass guitar, synth, whatever, and know exactly what to do with an EQ to sculpt it and get it to cut through beautifully on any speaker that it will possibly be listened to. So to grab your free checklist, just go to eqchecklist.com, the link here in the video and in the description box. Just go to eqchecklist.com, download it. It's a one to two page PDF, super easy read. The idea is actually to have it printed out or keep it on your phone or tablet or whatever is near you while you mix as a reference. So when you're EQing your next mix, pull up the checklist and boom, 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 walk your way through and it'll help you make sure you get good sounding tracks every single time. So pick it up at eqchecklist.com is my gift to you. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to these videos if they're helpful and I'll see you on another video real soon.